Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information that you need. What is bone graft? What is it made of? Um, is there a possibility of allergic reaction? Uh, bone graft is nothing more than a biosynthetic glass. It is osseoconductive, and, um, and so we don't really have uh, reactions with that. Uh, <clears throat> console uh, primarily is what we use and um, it comes as either, either a granule uh, formation or as a putty. Either formulation uh, works well. Um, the granular tends to show up better radiographically and so once he places that bone graft in the defect we're going to x-ray it make sure that the defect is filled with that consult appropriately, the putty doesn't show up as, as well on x-ray. So we stick with primarily the granular. Uh, the putty is just a little easier to handle because you can actually pick it up and, and put it into the defect and kind of see where it's at. Um, and, uh, and so this is, um, it is a synthetic type of uh, material that, um, no, we don't really see any allergic reactions to it. What makes Doxyrobe better over Clinderol? We have switched, but wondered what your opinions were. Um, Doxyrobe um, is um, used primarily um, in conjunction with bone grafting. And it's used not for the antibiotic property, but for uh, the membrane property. Because Doxyrobe, once you mix it together, and set it with the air water syringe, it becomes malleable. It's almost uh, like a soft candle wax where you can actually place it over the, the bone graft. It stays in there as a membrane to help hold the bone graft in place, prevent migration of granulation tissue back into that defect, and, um, and makes the, the bone graft more successful. We used to use it in our root planing um, studies have shown that there is no benefit between root planning alone and placing a periosudic, whether it's doxyrobe or clindorol. Or clindorol. Um, so we don't use that in just root planing cases, uh, but we still use it in the capacity in conjunction with uh, bone graft procedures. Do you always have a three to six month follow-up RADS on post bone graft? If so, do you do full mouth RADS? Uh, good question. Yeah, our bone graft patients, Julie, we typically will recheck in about four months. And uh, no, we don't do full mouth RADS. We do um, uh, RADS as needed based on that previous visit. So that's why I like to have those dental charts made out in such a way that I can look at that dental chart quickly and know, okay, I have to re-radiograph maybe the uh, maxillary canine. I have to re-radiograph, of course, where the bone graft was done. Uh, maybe I have to re-radiograph um, the incisors, see what you know what the bone loss looks like, the, if it's progressed at all. So we're going to make notes and keeping in mind what our next procedure is going to be with regards to evaluating this patient. Um, but typically, no full mouth extraction or full mouth X-rays are typically done um, once a year, maybe once every ten months if we've got an aggressive periodontal patient. Um, as a rule of thumb. Good question. All right, lots of questions um, regarding the bone graft and the doxyrobe. Um, <clears throat> and um, how long does doxyrobe gel need to set up? 
um, just takes a few seconds, uh, just, you know, maybe 10 seconds with, uh, with that air water syringe. And yeah, we're going to use both air and water as a mist. Um, we never want to just use the, the water button. It comes out as too much of a hard stream and just tends to bounce back in your face. So it's always air water together. And do we find any major differences in recovery of the bone in the use of granular versus putty? No, we don't. Absolutely the same, um, same success rate as far as um, both of those. Is the cost of console affordable for clients with potential financial financial restraints? Um, console is fairly inexpensive as opposed to um, true bone, uh, cancellous bone, which is um, used sometimes for bigger defects, trauma, um, and that's actually um, scavenged bone, sterilized. Um, and that can be very, very costly. And so we don't use that on a regular basis. Um, and console tends to be much more affordable. Um, and again, we do charge per site uh, for these patients. And, um, and you kind of have to determine, um, you know, what cost you're going to set this as. Um, console comes in a container that we tend to break up into multiple patient uh, applications so that we're able, we don't have to waste um, the, the product and we can use it on multiple patients. So we use little stat spin or um, clean um, blood tubes to distribute the medication so we can use it on multiple patients. That helps with keeping the cost down as well. The doctor was performing the open root planing and bone graft, um, seemed like a very small defect. Are you doing that on any bone loss you see? And do you have a different charge for replanning? Is that a service you include with extractions? So um, this is the parameter, pocket six millimeter or more. Uh, with vertical bone loss, that's less uh, than that, 50%, um, sometimes less than 25%. There are those teeth that are on the fence that we're trying to treat. Um, but it's the more advanced defects that we're using a bone graft in and the owner, again, we're setting expectations. This is a tooth that, you know, could be extracted or we can, you know, use this bone graft. And um, in most cases it's successful, but it's not 100%. Um, and it is, the, you know, the, the more advanced um, defects that we're seeing. We charge, when we charge this particular procedure, we're charging a flat. We're charging for suture. We're charging for open root planing, which is a little bit more than closed root planing. We're charging for the bone graft itself and then um, uh, additional anesthesia. So, um, so all of those components go into um, that particular procedure. And again, those are all line items on our invoices so the owners can see all of those steps and it shows value. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash inv.